Aubrey. Oh, the lights are bright. Um, well, I hope what I'm going to talk to you about will be music to your ears after uh, the last performance. And um, without further ado, once upon a time, we used to build with natural materials, didn't we? And this isn't so long ago, 1925. That was the f that was uh, the first bailed houses, and before that, all cultures have histories of building with natural materials, with clay in particular, clay and straw with the earth. And once upon a time, we all used to build, and by all, I mean every person in this room would be part of building in some capacity. It wasn't just protected for the professionals and the architects and the people who'd been to university. It was something that was a natural part of life. And so uh, part of what I want to say is I'm not telling you anything new. I'm not rediscovering anything. It's just bringing back to our hands the things that we used to have not very long ago, a couple of generations. What happened? How did we lose that heritage? It's, it's hard to really unravel it. We know that it's happened, but it's hard to say exactly why it happened. We've got lots of these mass-produced, standardized houses that are really poor quality when you look at them. But people don't have any choices. They haven't got any options. They have to choose something like this or something that looks a bit like this. And part of it was because construction became professionalized. And what that's meant in the UK, and it's what that's meant in a lot of countries, is that you don't see women in construction anymore. And if you think about the last world war, women were there. The Waterloo Bridge in London was built entirely by women. And not many people know that, but it was because all the men were at war killing each other. <laughs> and what happened as well was the banking industry, which started off as a way to help ordinary people to, to have some, some level of footage in the property market against all the landowners and the people who had way too much money. And what's happened now since the crash is, as we know, is that banking has become very corrupt and it's become full of people who play around with our money and with our ideas and our optimism. And also that part of that, coupled with that, is rising land prices. So people come to me all the time saying, I want to build my own house, but I can't afford the land. <coughs> if we had the land, we could build. And we know that's true. We can, we can get stuff, we can scavenge stuff, we can find things to build with, but we have to have the place to do that. And these are the things that have happened to us so that we can't, we've actually lost control of building our own houses now. So, what are we doing about it? What I'm trying to do about it is I'm trying to raise awareness through education, through networking, at a grassroots level, because I've given up with all those people up there because they're not there to help us, to provide practical courses on real building sites for people like you. And putting those courses, if we can, into back into the further education colleges, into the national <coughs> curriculums in every country, and working on European projects to do that sort of thing. And I'm also trying to, as part of networking, it's not just me, there's lots of people, trying to give you practical alternatives using natural materials so that you don't have to only take the lowest common denominator. There are other options, there are other choices, but we have to have them put into our hands. And that means we've got to be able to provide affordable designs that everybody can use. 
And so that links in very much to the theme of this conference about open source. It's about sharing knowledge, sharing skills, sharing expertise, because it's not rocket science what we're doing. It's very ordinary, very basic, and it's something that we all would have been involved in 200 years ago. So natural building, natural materials are our heritage. They're simple, they're accessible, and they're generally very locally available. So I wouldn't go and try and build with straw houses in the middle of the desert, because there is no straw, that's not sensible. But I would try and build in Mongolia, where they've got lots of straw, but they haven't got baling machines, because we can solve the problem of baling straw if we've got the material. It's not a, it's not a difficult thing to do. Clay, most of the houses, the vast majority of houses in the whole world are still made of clay. And yet, we forget bricks. Bricks are clay, they're just fired bricks. And, you know, you have to be careful about the lobbies because fired brick houses had a lobby behind them in the Middle Ages so that you could only build houses out of fired brick. So all that sort of protectionism about ideas and about materials started coming in when profits started coming in. Wood, we use a lot of wood, unprocessed wood, coppiced wood. Again, in the UK, the coppice industry is one of the biggest growing industries now. But if you think about uh, our country, a small country which began the Industrial Revolution, the steel industry was founded on, on regenerating fuel from coppiced woodlands originally, before coal. And then they wanted to cut all the coppices down and build houses and factories and mills on them, so they destroyed their fuel source that way, and they started using coal. But uh, if you look back to the origins of a lot of industry, it was founded on water power. Um, we could do that again. It's just that other things have come in that have made a lot of money for people. So that's behind a lot of the reasons why things have changed, to my mind. And so... Um, we go to EcoBuild every year uh, in London, which is a sort of, it started off as a sort of um, a place where uh, odd people and eccentric people who were into uh, clay and earth and natural paints and non-toxic materials and straw got together once a year to try and tell other people about the exciting world that we were living in and how easy it was and how straightforward. And um, lots and lots of people come and talk in those forums. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the people that came to us year after year was North Kesteven Council, which is a little council in Lincolnshire uh, in the east of England. And after they'd been coming back to us for three years, all their staff getting very excited about straw and clay and uh, lime plaster, they said, right, we're ready now. We want you to design for us social housing. And they, they already had a reputation for being a go-ahead council in terms of environmental issues. And so we came up with um, designs for semi-detached houses, which are very traditional in the UK. Two living units joined together on two floors. And this is the design here. And they uh, put it out to tender and uh, they chose a local builder who they felt had the right attitude. And that's quite important. When you're doing something new and you're starting to scale it up, if you don't have, have people with the right attitude, they can destroy it before you've even started because they'll badmouth it and they'll moan and they'll, because they don't want it to work, it won't work. But um, Taylor Pearson were the company that we worked with and I have to say they were brilliant. And we, part of the way we, we work is that we don't just want to design something simple. We don't just want to 
introduce it to a, a new company to help us build it, but we want ordinary people on the building site working with us. Because part of our philosophy is the process. The process and the people is so important. It's not just the materials. It's how you do it. It's who you do it with that's important. So we ran training courses on the building site to build the straw walls and to learn about plasters. And it was very successful. And we had to do all sorts of complicated things with insurance and stuff. But we got around those problems. And um, those, we now have the... I'll talk about those houses a little bit more later on in the story. But, um, sorry, this slide's not as clear. But this year we've been working on the same model, which is about simple houses. There's no need to overcomplicate anything. We designed a three houses together, a terrace of houses, which is something I've said personally I'd always like to do, for a couple who live in the south of England who have, um, they're trying to make a living by running a farm and having holiday lets in order to supplement their income. They already had a couple of uh, uh, holiday lets on the land and they wanted to be able to provide holidays for people in wheelchairs and their carers. So we designed them a two-storey building in three units that would do that, and they're self-building it. So I don't know if you noticed the price on the last slide, 108,000, which was a contractor-built house. And, um, sorry, I'm just trying to sort out this. This one, which is self-built, which means they're doing all the labour themselves, so that cost isn't part of the process, is only 33,000 per unit. It's a massive difference, and it shows, first of all, how far we've come in a few years, and it also shows the, what your labour cost is worth on a building site. And these people are not builders, they've come from IT and from being a full-time housewife and mother to do it. And these are the people, these are the people that, uh, that make that possible. You. So I'm going to just run through this pretty quick, because I want to show you some of the pictures at the end, just to show you that what we're working with is natural materials with very low embodied energy. 85% of these houses is low embodied energy material. You can't say that about any other, any other house building process. We've been building commercial buildings. In London, this is one we completed this year, 600 square meters of a, uh, this is not load bearing, this one's an infill. Uh, everything in it is natural. And this was done for the, the council in London. This is it almost finished. It wasn't designed by us, but it was, uh, we, we had consultation on it. And this one is quite a famous one near Stansted Airport, which is having an extension built on it. It was so successful that, that they've had an enormous number of people coming to see it. It was built at a commercial cost, and it's saving them 70% every year on their fuel bills because it's so thermally efficient. Um, we looked to other countries where they're using big bales in Denmark, uh, Bernerschmidt in uh, Italy and all over the place, and we designed uh, a centre up in East Yorkshire which uh, hasn't got funding yet. Maybe I should talk to them about crowdfunding. Uh, again, based on the same principles, it's all natural materials. There's no cement in any of these buildings. This is load-bearing chalk stabilised chalk for the foundations. We've hidden the rainwater harvesting inside the plinth. It can carry trucks. You, can, you could hold eco-build up here. Um, we'd love to build it, but uh, it's not on the card yet. And uh, we focused a lot on foundations, changing foundation design, going back to basics, making foundations flexible and breathable again, which is how they used to be built before cement. It makes them very eminently earthquake-proof. 
and you can build foundations like this for a three-bedroomed house for less than £500. We've just done it. So nothing else compares with it. And when I tell people that, they just laugh because it's so ridiculously low, they don't really believe me. Um, these are some of the other foundations you can build without cement. This one uh, is the one we've developed for... Um, houses that do that need to be very thermally efficient so the foundation also the plinth wall needs to be needs to match that u value so you don't lose heat through underneath and uh, it's using um, foam glass which i noticed was used as a flat roofing system and i asked the manufacturer if we could turn it on its side and use it as load bearing and they had one block that you could do that with so now we use it in our designs this is the uh, Council housing, social housing. I think anybody would be proud to live there. And these are these are council tenants. So these are people who, you know, most of the time don't get a very good deal out of life. And here they are with a fantastic house to live in, with a wood burning stove, open plan downstairs, and uh, beautiful lime plastered walls. This is um, a building near us in West Yorkshire that. Um, most people don't even know it's made of straw. It's a very professional finish to show you that you can finish things like this if you want to. This is load bearing, so there's no framework in it. And we work for the National Trust, which is a very prestigious organisation in the UK. Again, we insist, well, they insisted as well, that we had lots and lots of training courses on site because if you get to do it yourself, you get excited. We call it bail frenzy, by the way, and it's very infectious. But you get excited about it. You tell your friends. Your friends have a go as well. And you end up, one way or another, finding a project that you can work on, eventually finding a way you can do it for yourself. So this is the National Trust one. Again, very sustainable. Very All the, all the stuff that it's made of... Is, <laughs> I'll only be a couple of seconds is all natural. These are all natural houses. The first two-story house in Ireland. Um, another two-story load-bearing house in uh, Exmoor. This one you might have seen because it's a very funky hobbit house in Wales. And I'm teaching a course there next month. And this, um, finally, is what I really consider to be the next generation of natural buildings. And anything less than this is a failure of imagination. So thank you very much for listening. Chciałabyś zadać pytanie? Chyba nie. Ja właściwie nie, aż nie wiem, co powiedzieć, tak mi się podobały te wszystkie domy, więc zapytam e, tak dość osobiście, który z tych projektów... E, so maybe I will ask the question in English. It's a very simple and very personal one. Uh, what of all of those great buildings or techniques that you have developed is your favorite achievement? It's, it's so hard to say what my favourite is because uh, it's so much about the people that I've met on those building sites. Um, I've said for many, many years that what I really wanted to do was build a terrace of straw bale houses. And finally this year I've managed to do that after 15 years. So I think I'd have to say Elmfield Farm. Okay, thank you very thank much. You.